Margarita and me will present uh, what is this building we are working on for the common training framework. What I just did is I, uh, I put the, what we have a bit in a different uh, order. And you can see that this definition by ELO and ISCO, this is kind of the foundation of uh, the whole building. And another thing which we are not going to change is this IFLA UNESCO charter for landscape architecture education. So these are both the foundations. And what ECLAS and EFLA formally developed together was a set of minimum requirements for landscape architecture education. That was a very condensed document with uh, some guidelines. For the rest, we have this EFLA Europe guidance document for recognition and accreditation. And we have this ECLAS guidance document, it's from 2010. And while working on it, uh, we had different projects. We had a project on the, in the EU Land 21 on learning lines and teaching modules. And that uh, explains about the pedagogy, about the studios, about the assessment strategy and so on. And we have this EU Teach. And above this all is uh, an umbrella of a professional qualification uh, framework. So if we first look at the uh, uh, professional side, maybe Margarita can explain um, how the situation is at the IFLA Europe side. Since the beginning of uh, IFLA Europe uh, in 1989, uh, immediately, immediately after was set up a school recognition panel to maintain the quality of the training. And last month, uh, we decided a school recognition panel, uh, underlining many changes in society, increased diversity of the profession uh, to address the needs of this changing world and uh, contemporary society the new definitions that Fritz mentioned before, the efforts going on for European and international automatic recognition of the profession that Katarina and Fritz mentioned, the work in progress uh, defining the European Common Training Framework for Landscape Architecture, and also the need to link closely to Inland Project. And we understood that some schools are reviewing teaching methods and procedures due to coronavirus. So, if the Europe decided last month to start uh, because ECLAS and Le Nôtre always co collaborating uh, with this uh, school recognition panel and with IFLA Europe. And uh, during the last decade, we all um, mentioned that uh, we need to revise the revision of uh, the process, but uh, mainly uh, the documents. We need to simplify uh, to have basic and simple standards, uh, specific design, insist in design, and to update, of course, the knowledge, the skills, and the competences. So we decided the next step, steps, it will be deadline 2022, uh, because it's 30 years after Blue Book publication, the Blue Book was the first um, publication that IFLA Europe uh, set up at uh, 1992, uh, a survey of the schools and the programs in Europe. So it will, be, it will be nice to have 30 years after the revision of the process and the documents. The next, next steps are March, the first draft, with the basic elements for standards. Uh, then ECLAS, Le Nôtre, Common Training Framework in Holland, contributions. In summer, we would like to have a consultation and to collect uh, contributions from national associations and of course universities. And we all, ECLAS, Le Nôtre and IFLA Europe would like in the, uh, the autumn to have a presentation of the process status at our uh, general assemblies. Very quickly, uh, landscape architecture, uh, you know, the profession uh, has a aesthetic and the scientific principles. Uh, and uh, we have uh, um, 
the role of the landscape architect is very diversified, but the holistic planning process is very important. The International Federation of the World, IFLA, uh, was born in 1948, uh, and in 19, as I mentioned before, 1989, uh, the European Foundation, the former EFLA, now IFLA Europe, uh, with uh, 34 members for the moment. Next. Um, the objectives of, of our federation not only deal with the profession, it's wider, uh, dealing with people, economics and the environment, uh, and uh, also solidar solidarity-based society. Uh, in this belief, we understand several organizations have much in common with us. Next, please. Uh, so the, the main um, organizations, which one we cooperate. Next, please. Um, Le Notre Forum at Sarajevo in uh, 2014. Uh, these exchanges are very, very useful for uh, the local professionals too, but uh, to the universities, to students, uh, I think it was uh, it's a great organization and to continue. Next, please. Um, IFLA Europe is a, a, has a status of observer at the Council of Europe. When the European Landscape Convention was uh, promoted, uh, it states that each party undertakes to promote training for specialists, professional and experts, and to establish and support schools and university courses. Next, please. Uh, of course, society is changing needs and aspirations, and but there are also constant change affected uh, by global matters. Uh, so the profession is always continuing to adapt and uh, also landscapes uh, have human influence and the natural influence. Next, please. So landscape architects are or must be and, and must be trained to deal with this change and uh, to look to some concepts. Uh, they are presented as new, they are always changing the names of the concepts, but some one are very, very old and uh, in practice for many years. But we recognize the complexity of the landscape uh, that involves many disciplines. Next, please. Uh, so, to man, uh, the ma for the maintenance of the quality of this training and professional standards, IFLA Europe maintains since the beginning a permanent school recognition panel. Uh, now we have 11 members. Two of these members are ECLAS representatives, and we go through the programs that uh, universities apply uh, to uh, have a recognition. We stated that landscape architectural education must be at university level with landscape architecture as the main subjects. Seven, uh, 100 uh, college and universities uh, we know for applications, uh, 200 courses, but very few for the moment are recognized by IFLA Europe. It was, it, this is important to ensure uh, free circulation. Uh, so we, um, ask very much to the universities uh, presented in this forum uh, to encourage the schools to apply because really we have uh, uh, only 32 recognized at the moment. Uh, the documents uh, Guintaras and Fritz presented it in, re in red are the, the most important uh, that uh, the school recognition panel, panel use every day. These documents, the, the, the two main documents, defines knowledge, skills, and competences on a detailed level, and uh, they are uh, relevant for setting up or to check the structure and the quality of the education. And the second one details the design of uh, the curricula. So this is, uh, I mentioned before, in 1992, uh, 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 the, this blue book was published with a survey of uh, university and educational systems. After this survey, Eccles and Lenot contributed with guidelines and instruments for the, the previous slides, the, the main documents that we are using. And it is very useful for assessment and recognition 
but sometimes they help schools to argue uh, for additional conditions or improvements in curriculum, in curriculum. So we think it's very important. All of us recognize that uh, there must be uh, revised, so we are starting the revision. Uh, before I end, uh, it's my last slide, I think. Uh, I presented this one. Uh, before I end, I would like to introduce to all of you Attila Toth from Slovakia. Uh, he's teaching at the, the University of Nitra and uh, he accepted to be uh, IFLA Europe representative at the Inoland project. So Attila is with us today. And I hope a few Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Margarita. I'll uh, give a short impression of the ECTAS guidance. Uh, I think most of you know. And I also would like to say that uh, Attila is the chair of the Lenotre Institute. So uh, he has uh, many functions in this uh, network. Um, Good to synergize. <laughs> yeah. The access guidance has a description of the core competences and the generic competence of landscape architecture. And also it's more detailed in uh, specific competences. And apart from this, there is an overview of the degrees and uh, the way to assess and the teaching modes and uh, etc. But the guidance is now from 2010 and during other projects we discovered it's a bit outdated. Um, if you look at um, these competencies, there are some are more on, are on the processes. So it's about research, design, planning and management. Some are more dealing with aspects of landscape architecture and some are more on the technical aspects uh, like the construction and the plant materials and the vegetation. And there, is, there are some competences on information technology and professional practice. And during the EU land uh, project, we discovered that, that there are new developments. We have things like geo design. There is more focus on research. Um, there are changes in the, the fields. So it's really essential that uh, these kinds of things should be changed or at least updated. Um, if we look at it, um, it is due and also what Katerina and uh, Margarita pointed out, that there is a, a, a development of professional tasks. And also if we look at the educational policies of the EU, uh, there are lots of policies on the education area. There's a digital education action plan. There's a new research uh, area plan. And all these plans, they state some things about education, also about the professions. For instance, that higher education should have an important role in uh, implementation of the sustainability development goals that are uh, coming from the United Nations. And they need some kind of translation into the profession because it's essential that our future graduates uh, contribute to these. And there are also lots of policies on the profession like the water management framework, um, the, the agricultural uh, policies. So, so there's a lot to do and we have to think how these will have an impact uh, on uh, our training. Um, in the EU land project, we did a more detailed elaboration um, and that was the former uh, uh, foregoer of the Innerland project uh, and that was also coordinated by Ginta Stauskis and the Lithuanian uh, 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 Vilnius Tech is called now. And in this project, we elaborated very in detail. It's a document of 200 pages of learning lines, learning trajectories, also blocks of competences, but there are very detailed learning aims, learning outcomes, assessment methods, and there's a set of modules. And this uh, project provides a guidance which university can use but still there is a need to go a bit further, depending on what you think is necessary in, in this all. And um, for instance, what would we uh, would show, it should not be a very static and rigid, uh, rigid schedule, but uh, we developed learning lines for each competence 
and universities and schools can adapt to it using uh, a learning line for a special focus or deepening a learning line so they really can work with this. So we see this as some kind of work tool to develop further your uh, programs. And um, within the framework of the Innerland projects, we, uh, we looked a bit uh, to different uh, other frameworks. Um, what are the elements that should be in a common training framework? And if we look at proposals, uh, for instance, uh, of the laboratories or also of the ski instructors, it uh, should say something about the context of the profession, the different roles and tasks and what the professionals do, the demographics, so what kind of schools are there, what kind of diplomas do they have, um, and then the shape, how does it look like the document, and there should be uh, guidelines about the structure of the education, uh, the different uh, competences and uh, knowledges, and what's also added is uh, a code of conduct. So this could act um, as a basis for our development of this common training framework. And if we look again then at the building we had and which, which Fritz showed in the beginning, is that I think the foundations will stay the same. So the definition of ELO in ELO and the IFLA chapter will change the same. But we will replace the Birmingham agreement by a common training framework. And that makes it possible that the ECLAS guidance can be a bit changed, but also contain less because parts of the ECLAS guidance can go into the feed into the common training framework. And also I think parts of the um, IFLA Europe documents for recognition can go to the common training framework. And what stays on, on the first floor are the documents that really are related to the recognition panel and, and the, the process of recognition for the profession. So I think this is what we aim to develop uh, within the Innerland project and propose the main principles later on to uh, ECLAS and also to IFLA Europe. And I think the workshop will be stay more or less the same, but maybe there will be more tools coming in from the Innerland project, but maybe also from other uh, projects. So this is a, a global idea of where we could work to. Yes, this is, uh, we have this uh, Birmingham document and you, you replaced it to the common training framework. I think this is a good idea. So the background to the Birmingham uh, document is that at this time, uh, we thought that uh, landscape architects could get an article like architects. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you look to the articles uh, for the professions which have, have automatic recognition, it's only 10 points or 11 points. It, it's very, very short. And this was uh, the, uh, the background to have a document which has very condensed the main uh, uh, matters of the profession in a document. So I think it could be uh, moved on uh, to, to, to another document. Yeah. Good, uh, shall I continue with the process? And then we have some 20 minutes for uh, question, answers and discussion. Hi, Veli. Good to see you. <laughs> Hello, just a short question, uh, Geron. You mentioned that uh, the ECLAS guide guidelines needs to be a revision. Mm -hmm. Have you already started that or? No, this, this will be in this process. Part of it. Okay, thank you. Okay, then uh, the timeline of the process that we envisage and uh, you all will, will be part of it if you want. And if you don't want, well, we need to find some uh, replacements uh, for you. We are thinking of a process uh, which will be started by a short survey, just to know whether you'll be active and what you can uh, contribute to the whole process. 
Then we will have on Friday, the 26th of February, we have an online session a bit like this, but with a bit more space for discussion uh, on the sustainability goals and the Europo uh, European policies. Then in April, we have planned a collective brainstorming session that will make use of uh, online tools and will help by a survey just to see what your opinions and ideas on. Then we have a second survey and that is because we have already the ECLAS guidance, which is based on the tuning project, which uh, is uh, uh, truly stated by Richard Stiles. And maybe we should have some shift in focus or maybe there are new competences that are more important. So we would like to know what you think uh, of uh, the, the competences, what is the, the main thing, uh, what, uh, what are new competences. And then within the framework of the Innerland project, we'll, uh, we'll develop a first draft, a first concept. And there will be an online discussion on Friday, the 7th of May. Then uh, Innerland will uh, structure the outcomes. And then if we have a more uh, solid draft, we have a third survey that where people can uh, give their opinion on. Then we, uh, we will make uh, a draft for the ECLAS conference and also uh, for the assembly and the IFLA Europe meeting. And then we'll ask for uh, decisions on the main principles. And next year after the summer, uh, Innerland will work further on this. So if you look at the planning, oh yeah, apart from this, we had the idea to start a Delphi study and this could be done by student, uh, student or students of uh, the HFVU. And uh, people who are involved in the tuning project could also contribute uh, to this. And if you look at the planning in general, um, this is how it looks over time. So the, these are the same activities over time. And you see the planning outlined here. Well, what do we expect from you all? Um, well, we expect you to take part in two online sessions on, uh, with more information, two sessions with brainstorming and uh, using your or other tools to collect ideas, then answer to three surveys and maybe contribute to a paper and maybe you will ask to answer to the Delphi study. So this is what you, we expect from you. And we already sent a mail what the process could bring to you. And I won't go over this, but I think that by being involved in it, this project and make contributions and studying the material, you have a better insight. And uh, what I uh, experienced when I was uh, peer reviewing um, Netscape programs, that the ECLAS guidance and the EFLA recognition documents were always uh, important for uh, evaluating courses because they, uh, they act as a benchmark for uh, the programs. And what I expect is that this common training framework, whether it will be accepted or not, um, it would be good if it would be an official regulation by the EU, but even if it won't, it could be our common training framework and we can use it as a benchmark for courses, for development and uh, further uh, um, work. So I think this process could also bring a lot to you.